Okay, so today I'm going to be making, well, I won't be making, but Mac will be making ice cream and uh, chocolate pastry. He's going to teach us how to make both. And Mac is the executive pastry chef at Providence, a restaurant, a Michelin star restaurant in LA, which I love and is amazing. So you should check it out. Well, I think the first thing we're going to do is going to make the Bailey's ice cream. Okay. Here we have uh, the sugar and some ice cream stabilizer that okay. you can just get from an online store. Really, it's really easy to get it now. And also some dextrose. Okay. It's another form of uh, sugar. This might be a rookie question, but what does ice cream stabilize? Some, some, this particular stabilizer, uh, it absorbs 10 times its own weight. So it absorbs the, the water in the milk, in the cream, in any liquid really, to so that it doesn't crystallize as much. Okay. So you get a really nice smooth ice cream, something scoopable. So I've mixed the stabilizer and the sugar. Okay. And the dextrose in here, and the milk powder. And in room temperature, um, I'm just gonna rain the dry mixture in the liquid as I was. That prevents the stabilizer from pumping up. And then we slowly bring the mixture up to 85 Celsius just to activate the stabilizers. What's one of the more interesting or challenging techniques you've had to learn? I think making ice cream is challenging. It's just there's too much science. And, and I think there's science and math and... Yeah. Um, equipment-wise to, to think about when you're making ice cream, uh, temperature-wise and, and all that, and flavors. There's so many flavors yeah. that you can think of, and not all of them might work with um, specifically for that uh, ice cream base. So sometimes you gotta start from scratch. So it's really important that we reach that 85 degrees Celsius. Okay. Because then you, you really fully activate the, the stabilizer. But if you go over 90, it'll be super thick. So you don't want that. So now we're gonna cool it down in the, in the ice pack. Okay. Really quick. So now you could use this for any ice cream. Okay. You could add um, uh, cocoa powder or chocolate to make chocolate ice cream while it's hot. So you can uh, melt it down. Today we're making Bailey's. Yeah. So we're going to add the reduced uh, cooked off uh, Bailey's okay. from Irish cream and uh, a part of it uh, raw. So we're just going to add that. In. So we're going to cool that ice cold before we add it to the machine to churn. Okay. The less time that it spends in the machine, the better the ice cream is because then um, the smaller ice crystals Okay. Going get a smoother amount. How do you know that? Making ice cream really is a science itself. Yeah, it seems like one really small mistake and it could really ruin the whole texture. It makes you really appreciate ice cream a little bit more. Well, it makes me appreciate ice cream. You definitely already appreciate ice cream. <laughs> Has being a chef felt like a multidisciplinary project or endeavor for you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I wouldn't consider cooking or being, you know, doing pastry as a very prestigious job, like a, being a doctor or anything like that. And so when I did choose to be in this industry, I wanted, I wanted to make sure that what I do here is something that I wanted and it's something that uh, that I make sure I learn and that I make sure that uh, I do more than what I think that I can do for that particular job or that particular uh, pastry or that particular uh, technique that I'm that I'm uh, doing uh, without thinking about it you just kind of dive into artistry, uh, time management, people management, really. Yeah. Um, those are the kind of things that, you know, when you think of pastry chef, you think sugar, butter, pastry, uh, plate but of desserts. But there's so much more to it. But as, you know, getting those 
uh, purchases right, where the ingredients come from. Yeah. And you know, you're being an environmentalist. You're being yeah, sourcing them ethically. Where, right. You're, you know, you're not just buying sugar off the off, you know, a rack and yeah. whole foods or in rafts or anything like that. You're calling the farmer. You're making sure, you know, they do things sustainably. They yeah. do things that will make that will leave the land um, in better shape than it was when they, you know, had it. Um, making sure the ingredients you're getting um, that they're treating their people right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very important. I think uh, at Providence, uh, you know, as chefs, and I think as for me, I think that's really important. So you know, those are the kinds of um, things that that I think about when 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 I go to work. So I just scraped the bean out, the, the seeds actually. Um, you know, a good idea is with, with the leftover bean, I think with the ice cream, you can just put that in there okay. just for a little extra flavor because otherwise we have nothing else to do with it. So I'm gonna cream all that ingredients that I put in the bowl very slowly at first so that we incorporate all the dry ingredients with the butter mm -hmm. otherwise everything will just you know, be all over you. Here we have um, the dry ingredients so uh, cake flour, uh, whole wheat, in this case we have red five that we get from our friends, at Providence we get it from our friends at Hatchapi Green Project it's very delicious. We, uh, you've had it at Providence in, in our bread service. Yeah, they tried to take the bread away. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of carbs. Yeah, I'm, I love carbs. Whenever you're creaming, you, you really want to scrape the side of the bowl. Why? Because if you look at it now, you have a lot of uh, the uh, dry ingredients stuck in the bottom. Yeah, I see. And the paddle will ever reach that part. There will always be um, some ingredients stuck on the side of the bowl. So if you want, you could add, you could stream the egg into it. So now it's ready. Slowly. Is that a good That's speed? Good. And it's important to note that the butter and the, really all the ingredients are all room temperature. They're all what? Room temperature. Okay. If they were a little bit cooler, how would that affect the pastry? If, if the eggs were cool, it'll chill the butter. And it'll okay. pump up because cold butter is hard. Yeah. Right now, our, our eggs are a little bit cold. Mm -hmm. So, what you could do is when I brought a torch, if you have one at home, I don't, don't but, really use it. but I'll leave mine. If you one. don't, just make sure it's all room temp. Okay. I can just heat up the mixture on the side so I can melt that some of the butter so it can turn back into a mixture. Right now, it's all separated. Yeah, I see. And you want it to. Emulsify. If you don't want to, if you do have a torch and you use it, you don't want to cook the egg yolks or the eggs. Right, so how do you know? You just kind of do it in three second increments. Okay. Just do a final scrape. It's not perfectly emulsified, but once we have the flour, it'll, all, it'll be all right. Oh, sorry. You did. Now, when we did earlier, we start slow, okay. otherwise all the ingredients will be all over you. And you really don't want to change the speed anyway, because you only want the dough to come together. You don't want to work it, you just want all the dry ingredients to be in one mass. Okay, now we're going to put it in, a, in the fridge, but we got to flatten it out and put it in a cement Okay. Chocolate making has been really great. It, um, the challenge to that is not knowing, you know, anything. I mean, I knew about chocolate. I mean, I've worked with chocolate. We, we work with, you know, uh, chocolate that's, you know, cacao that's already been made into chocolate before. Mm -hmm. But we've never really did that. Like dived into like being to bar or being to dessert before. So getting a reputable person or farm or farmer to 
uh, sunless beams mm-hmm. is challenging. Uh, just the time that you spend uh, creating, you know, chocolate, just to taste and to make sure that that's the cacao that you want for the restaurant. It's tedious. It's tedious. And then also uh, the recipe development. You got, you know, one of the things that you do is you make a mistake and then you fix it. Yeah. And then you find out what can be done. Yeah, it's, you always want that first product to be, you know, the one, but it never really is. Yeah, it's That's, kind of like that with coding as well. Mm-hmm. When you're building something, it's really hard to see anything else besides yeah. what you envision. And then once you build it and you realize, okay, there might, there might be some bugs in this, and you have to iterate on it. It seems like but that. But you really want that first one to be. Yeah. Great, that, to be the first one. Yeah. That it, you, most, most of the time, if not all the time, it never happens that way. It's pure luck and divine intervention. If it does. So we're gonna make the caramel now. Okay. And then I've just had uh, the cream and the the coffee beans steeping. So I brought both to a boil. So you okay. see. We're gonna cover it for about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. We'll heat up the pan. Just because we're gonna make um, a dry caramel. But with the dry caramel, we start with the dry pan and just the sugar. Okay. So we're gonna caramelize the sugar in the pan, in a hot pan. We're gonna add a portion of the sugar first. So you don't wanna dump the whole mixture, because it'll cool down the pan. And do you maintain the same heat while you add the sugar in slowly? Let's okay. try. If it starts, if you find that it starts to burn, really, you can lower it down or take it off. Okay. Hot sugar is ho- hotter than boiling water. Okay. So you don't want to get this anywhere near your skin okay. or any part of your body. Is this a cooking-related scar? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's an oven-related scar. Like I said earlier. Additional sugar will cool it down. So when it gets too dark, you should just add a little bit more to what you're doing. But really, at the end, you really want to melt all the sugar. You're not, you know, looking for the color yet. You're looking to melt all the sugar first. Then, once everything is melted, we can go and worry about the color. Okay. Well, we measure the the cream that we, the coffee cream. So you really want to put a bit more cream than you would when you, than you would need when you're steeping because you'll lose some. Um, so the glucose, I find like the very best way to measure this is with your hands. So while your while your fingers are wet, just grab a little bit and put it back in there. Wow. Okay. You gotta do it quick, like six. Yep, I did it kind of slowly. Oh, 38. Ooh. Yeah, there you go, 37. Okay, cool. And you really want to cook it, I mean, really, it's preference, whatever, however dark you want it to be. What's but your preference? You want, a, I want a little bit of um, bitterness and a little bit of complexity. So we're going to take it a bit dark. Okay. So now it's bubbling, that's a really good time indication that I should add a cream. Be careful of the vapors because it's really hot, hotter than normal steam really. Okay. It could burn you really bad. So you want to add it slowly because as you see it goes up. If you add the whole thing, it might overflow. And sugar is not something you want in have, your skin. Have you ever had a sugar injury? Oh yeah. Oh my god. So that's a caramel. We'll season it with a little bit of salt. Looks beautiful. Just to temper the sweetness. Okay. And then we'll right away add the, the butter. Okay. So now we'll go from that spatula to a whisk, just to complete the emulsion. Wow, that's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Super dark. To cool. Okay. And then we'll go back to the ice. Okay. 
So remember we added, just make sure you don't add the vanilla that we added? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, meanwhile we could roll out the dough and form the part. Okay. How has being a pastry chef shaped other areas of your life or your food philosophy? Uh, simplicity. Like letting the, the great produce of, uh, of, you know, California to be the star or the great cacao that we get from Hawaii to be the main focal point. And we don't want to, you know, do too many thing, things to them that they, they lose what makes chocolate chocolate or what makes strawberries strawberries, berries strawberries strawberries. Um, there are people who've grown them taking great lengths and, and time and, and effort just to grow or fish or farm mm -hmm. these uh, ingredients and we don't want to invalidate all that work by doing too much by yeah. doing too much work to it. Um, simply as, but you know getting there uh, to, to a simple nice elegant delicious dessert or dish it's complex it's something that, you know, the word simplicity, you know, you think it's simple, it should be simple, but it's not. Yeah. The way getting there is, is complicated. So overall, I think the, the, the main thing that, that stands out is, I think, in terms of food philosophy, is to make it simple. I really respect that approach. Thank you. And it's hard to get there. Yeah, it sounds hard. <laughs> it sounds like a collaborative thing. It is. In the kitchen, it's a, it's a team. Yeah. It's never just about you. It's about the restaurant and the guests. Um, and we're just there to play our part to the best that we can. Yeah. Just be careful with my knife because it's sort of sharp. Okay. So you're just going to measure 245 grams of, of chocolate. We just want to chop it. Like half an inch pieces. Okay. It doesn't matter, we're gonna melt it. Okay. So now I'm forming the tart. Okay. And I'm just using the um, the side of my thumb to really push it out of in the corner to close to a 90 degree angle if okay. possible. So when it bakes you get a nice uh, what is, what's some insight that you would want to provide to an aspiring pastry chef? I think you definitely expect really hard work, long hours. Um, and that's something that if, if your passion and love and, you know, for what, what you want to do in pastry is so much bigger than that, um, then go for it. Mm -hmm. and join like, join us in the industry um, but I can't pretend and say that it's all going to be easy it's you know you work nine to five you'll have holidays off yeah that's just not true for most of, for, yeah. of the most of the industry yeah and anything worth doing, I think, is difficult. Right. Work, if you love something so much, if you like what you're doing so much, work never ends. Yeah. Like, you, you really just take it home. A lot of people say, you should never really take work home. Maybe me or you or, you know. It's, it's, not, e it's not that easy. Yeah. Sometimes you're just going to wake up and think about new ideas and it's there. You don't, you don't stop. But we probably should not be taking yeah. work home. <laughs> Balance is good. Yeah, but it does come. It does just, just come with a position and a job, and uh, the work that that particular uh, I do or we do as 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 creative people, really. And it's worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, I think I've said this many times. Why be in the industry? Yeah. I read though that you have a chocolate room that you I work do. in. Oh, we do. And I enjoy that very much. 200 grams. Okay. Um, it's temperature controlled. Uh, 
humidity control. So it's not only a chocolate, it's also the ice cream where we make the ice cream. So temperature is really important in that way. Sorry. And then 50 grams of it. Smells good. So we're gonna put the the caramel okay. while it's still slightly warm but not too hot. Give it as much as you want, but up because you're also putting we're also gonna put the ganache. Mm -hmm. So we just wanna kinda put a quarter of the way or a half. Okay. Do you paint? Do I paint? Mm -hmm. I used to. When did you stop? Uh, about like after high school. Okay. Because I really needed to focus on my career. I understand. I feel like but, there are a lot of transferable skills. Yeah. Uh, we're using the same talent. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, yeah, I mean that's the that art, art, like the artistry, having visual when you're plating and making a dessert. Yeah. Oh, let me get a bowl for you. Yes. You know what? Might even be better if we leave it in this bowl. <laughs> yeah, we can leave it in that bowl. Custom. That's so good. Oh my god, yeah. Holy cow. So now that we filled it with caramel, the last step is to add the, the ganache. So we're gonna make the ganache. So the cream and the invert sugar are in this pot already. We're gonna bring it to a, a slight simmer. Uh, we don't boil this. Okay. You don't want, um, you don't want to taste any burnt milk. All you want is the taste of the pure chocolate. Okay. The past year was has been very challenging as well. That's understandable. But that has allowed me to you know perfect those techniques. Practicing, having the time yeah, to practice. Yeah, having the time to to research and develop, and and you know. Uh, perfect my, I guess at, at a certain point, my technique of making chocolate, making ice cream, developing dessert, or anything like that. What's one of the more interesting things that you've tried to perfect during the pandemic? So we're gonna make a ganache now. Okay. So we're gonna do it in three batches. So we're gonna first one. That incorporate it and add the second, stirring in the center without adding too much air so you don't have air bubbles. Uh, so, I'm gonna put it in a tall uh, cylinder container because we're gonna use the hand blender to complete the emulsion. Okay, this will if it breaks or at any point, this is a good uh, tip to, to do so it brings it back to you. Submerge the hand blender in there, keeping it submerged all the time so we don't um, incorporate air. Ah! We're just gonna pour the ganache. Oh, it is super thick. On the surface. Beautiful. We're gonna tap it. Thank you so, so much for being a part of this. Yeah, I'm, I know it's... I'm honored and, and glad that I, I'm, um, I'm able to show you how to make a, a simple chocolate tart um, with the uh, chocolate that we make in-house at Providence. Yeah. I hope to see you again at Providence. Yeah, I'll definitely be at Providence, of course. Mm -hmm.